So let's go over our foundational scripture, John 8, 31 to 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, or the King James Version says, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Amen. The key is to continue. In, in consistency lies the power. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Or we can add there, the truth shall make you debt free. So the more, the more we know why we should be debt free, according to the word, the easier it will become to believe for debt freedom. And debt is a burden and a weight that God wants to remove from our lives. I'm telling you, there are so many people that are living under a weight of debt. And they need to know how to come free from it and know they're already free by the power of God's word. So as we, we are busy preparing and today we want to make that quality decision today at the end to live a debt-free life. Amen. It is important to know what God says about the subject. We've been learning that. We already said debt is part of the curse and we said debt freedom is part of the blessing and we are redeemed from the curse of debt. We looked at reasons why we must live debt free. Number one, because the word tells us to owe no man anything except love. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love you. <laughs> Amen. With the love of the Lord. Amen. Number two, because our covenant must be with God, not with the world. Number three, because borrowing from the world makes us slaves to the lender. And number four, because we must teach our children how to live debt free. We said we must settle three debt freedom issues. Debt freedom issues we must settle. Number one, God is my source, not people. Amen. Faith does not put pressure on people. It puts pressure on the blood covenant, on the word, on the blessing. Number two, I'm not limited to my salary. Say that I'm not limited to my salary. And then number three, it is God's will for me to live debt free. It's God's will. Amen. God will not ask you to do something if he doesn't give you the means, the power, the wisdom, the know-how on how to do it. If it's his will, he will show us how. So that's what we looked at. This week we're going to look at how to develop your faith for debt freedom. We must develop our faith. It started already and we're going to continue to develop it. So you've probably been thinking, how in the world am I going to live debt free? How can I buy a house or a car if I can't borrow the money? I'm barely living from paycheck to paycheck. Now, Brother Copeland had a conversation with Pastor George Pearson on, on uh, Believer's Voice of Victory uh, broadcast many, many years ago. Pastor George sold a house, him and his wife Terry, but then they ended up buying another house again on loan, on mortgage. And uh, so he was on the broadcast and Brother Copeland asked him directly, George, you sold a house, you, 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 you went and bought a house again on debt, why did you do that? And uh, he didn't know what to answer. He was fumbling with some words. And he said, come, I tell you why you did it. And this is what he said. He said, your faith was not strong enough or big enough to receive a debt-free house. He said, your faith level was not up to where you could receive a debt-free house. You had enough faith developed to give a house debt-free, but your faith was not developed enough at the time to receive a debt-free house. You see, he says it takes time to develop your faith. You don't just jump off into this kind of thing. And this is where most faith failures happen. People hear something, they read something, they hear a message, and so-and-so bought a jet. And now by tomorrow, they also want to buy a jet. And they fall flat on their spiritual face, and they think it's not, this faith stuff doesn't work. But their faith was not developed to that place. The people who have bought jets, they, their faith has developed to that place where they can lay hold of that. So there is also the place of the law of progression in the word of God where you progress. You go from, 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 you go from, you're faithful with little, God will make you rule over much. So I'm saying you and I must develop our faith and start where you're at. And believe God to pay off maybe a credit card or to pay off, uh, start believing God to, to, um, not to go buy clothes anymore on account or to buy a washing machine or, 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 or couches. And they, I'm saying start with where you're at and begin to release your faith for, for those type of things. Amen? Amen? But you must think a different way. There is another way. There is another option. There is another way of how we can live. Amen? 
but we must develop our faith. Amen. So the, the messages that you heard was not meant to condemn. It was meant to inspire you and then to get you to go and develop your faith. And so even today, you'll see all the scriptures I'm going to give, not all of it. There's a lot of scriptures all throughout the Bible, but you can take it and you can deposit it into your mind and then you begin to renew your mind and every mental limit begins to start falling away as the word renews your mind. I'm telling you, there's certain things that today I can believe God for. It took the same amount. It took this, it's the same faith that we needed to, to believe God for a loaf of bread many years ago that we're believing now God for to pay the budget of the church every month and our, and our family and our personal budget. Same faith, but it just gets developed. So just like you go to a gym, you don't start off picking up 20 kilo dumbbells. You start off with two kilos or three kilos. Amen. Amen. Taylor. Amen. So, so you, you start there and then you develop your muscles. We all got the same amount of muscles in our body. It just depends on who, how you develop yours. Now, we all got the same amount of faith. It's how you develop yours. How much time you can, are you taking the time to immerse yourself in, in, in the world and social media or others are taking the time to immerse themselves in scriptures and in the word and in these. Faith comes by hearing. Faith for death, free living comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you immerse yourself in these things and then it begins to work. Amen. So you don't just receive according to your seed sown. You also receive according to your faith. So I've shown you the illustration before, but I mean, if I have a 5-liter bottle here, and I have a 20-liter canister here filled with water, and now I start filling this 5-liter bottle with water, the rest of the, can the 15 liters in the, whole, in the canister is yours, but you can't receive it because your capacity to receive is only 5 liters. So you must develop your faith so that you can receive the rest of your 15 liters. It's not God withholding. It's that your faith can't receive it. You must develop your faith to lay hold and receive more. That's why today we need to stretch our faith and stretch our vision and believe God to receive the more that he has for us. Amen. So you must take the time to develop your faith. Take the time to increase your capacity to receive more. We're going to stretch beyond that mental limit. You know that mental limit and... And, and when, you, when you go to the garage and you only throw 100 rand every time, now God's stretching you to throw 500 rand petrol. And then that alarm goes off. It's like trying to pull you back into your 100 rand cage. No stretch and believe God for more, for bigger, you know. Or you go to McDonald's and you only buy the small burger. And now it's stretching, you know, buy the Big Mac and buy it. And then the alarm goes, what am I going to do? You, you outside your limits. Get back in. Now you go back. No, no, no more limits. Say no more limits. God can provide. God can provide. The same faith that provided for that loaf of bread will provide the two million rand for the contract. Same faith. Let's develop our faith. Let's stretch it. Amen. So you and I must strengthen and develop our faith to get out of debt and live debt free. We must stretch our faith to get out of debt and live debt free. We must believe God for it. We also need to make a quality decision to live debt free, which we're going to do today. We must make that decision. Once you make a quality decision, it starts happening. So what does God's word say about living debt free? God's word must be the base and the foundation of your commitment. And that commitment to getting out of debt and staying out of debt must grow. So it starts with the word. In the beginning was the word. So anything you begin with in your life, start with the word. You believe in God for healing, you start with the word. Get the scripture. Believe in God to lose weight. You start with the word. Get a scripture. <laughs> Amen. And then when the, when the donuts start showing up around you, birthday time, you reserve. Already I got a, a hippie pour a hundred and off a cake that I can go guy buy for my, this morning. I'm thinking, check your Lord now. We can go. She said, no, 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 no. Amen. But the temptation is there. We must resist. So look at Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Or listen to this. Be not conformed to the world system of debt, but be transformed into the kingdom of God's system of provision by the renewing of your mind. 
you and I can renew our minds where we look to God's system of provision instead of the world's system of debt. Amen. The J.B. Phillips of that verse says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. But let God remold your minds from within. So everything God does is from, we are inside out people. We're not outside in people. We live from the inside out. So God remolds our minds. Our minds are renewed. God can't renew your mind for you. You must renew your mind. God's not going to discipline your body for you. You must discipline your body. Romans 12, 1 and 2. You present your body as a living sacrifice and you renew your mind and then you will stop thinking like the world and don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. I tell you, this is the only... I'm telling you, all day, every day, I speak back to things, man. They tell me, oh, no, this is just who you are. You know, you watch a TV program, this is who you are. You can never change. And I speak back, I say, no, I've already changed. <laughs> Jesus changed me. I speak back, I open my mouth. Otherwise, you let that thought come in and then you start, you, you, it affects your mind. You speak back. Oh, no, no, it's, it's uh, you know, it's Amal circle. No, no, no circle right here. Don't say we suck me. You must renew your mind. Romans 12, 2 in the New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you or change you into a new person. How? By changing the way you think. The sky is not the limit. Your mind is the limit. Money is not the limit. Your mind is the limit. It's not money that's holding you back. It's not the government. It's not the people. It's not your past. It is your mindset where you still think you're poor. You still think you, you, you're poverty stricken. You're still thinking that's how it will always be. It's not anything else but inside. Renew your mind and you'll start seeing every mental limit start falling away as God's word renew your, renews your mind. Amen. You can be healed and live well. You can have joy and be strong. You don't need to grieve and cry and be in sorrow every day because you're crying for family that has gone home to be with the Lord. No, no, you can have joy today. Amen. One of the things you can start doing, stop saying, oh, I miss them. I miss them. Start saying, thank you, Lord, for the time I did have with them. And I'm looking forward to seeing them again. You see? Because now you're no more in grief and sorrow. Thank you, Lord, for the time I had with them. Now you're grateful. And I'm looking forward to spending, seeing them again in the future. But you can have joy. You can have strength. Amen. So let's look at some of, listen, what one does today for the sake of tomorrow is called an investment. What one does to enjoy today at the expense of tomorrow is called debt. So think about it. When you in having debt, you are already taken from tomorrow now. You are enjoying today. You haven't worked for that money. That's why it's so easy to go buy. You don't feel the pain of it when you buy something because you haven't worked for it yet. That's why it's so easy to just pay on credit. But if you work for that money already, you're going to think twice about whether I should buy this item now because I work so hard for it. Well, debt is taken from the future and joined today. And then you don't feel the pain of it when you buy and you're already taking future time because it's going to take time to make that money. You, take, you took future money, you took, you took future time. So you and I must be careful when we go in, you know, sometimes it's, it's certain things we don't need right now. You know, believe God for that. I mean, it takes, it might take a bit longer, but at least it's debt free when it comes. You know, and um, no brother so and so pulled out with a new car. Now, I'll, I'll get even a bit. Now, the family member, you know, Mr. Jones. I want to be like Mr. Jones, keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up with the Kardashians. No, you know, you must keep up with the word. The word. You must keep up with the word and go at your faith level. Amen. So here are some scriptures that we can use to stretch our faith for death. From Romans 13, 8. Keep out of debt and owe no man anything except to love one another. So declare this. I am keeping out of debt. I am out of debt and I owe no man anything except to love them. Amen. Romans 13, 8 in the J.B. Phillips says, Keep out of debt altogether, except the perpetual debt of love which we owe one another. So the only thing I owe you is love. Amen. 
It's wonderful. We don't need to owe people money. We can owe them love. Proverbs 22, 6 and 7. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Say this, I'm no longer a servant to the lender. Amen. Amen. Start believing that, declaring it, and it will become like that. Amen. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord will open to you. His good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Say this after the me. The Lord has opened to me Lord His good treasure, His good treasure. The, heavens. the heavens. He has given the rain to my land <laughs> and is blessing all the work of my hand. I am lending to many nations, but I'm not borrowing. Amen. You're going you're gonna to declare a lot of things today. My whole message is declaring. At the end, there's a lot of declare, declaration at the end also. So just prepare to say something. Amen. Deuteronomy 15, 6. For the Lord your God will bless you just as he promised you. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. You shall reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over you. Amen. Let's believe God for that. Say this after me. The Lord my God, Lord my God has, blessed me, has blessed me just as he promised me. I'm lending to many nations, but I'm not borrowing. I'm reigning over many nations, but they are not reigning over me. Amen. Glory be to God. It's not money that's keeping you back. It's not people that's keeping you back. It's mindset. Start having a prosperous mindset. Start seeing yourself as blessed and wealthy and rich, as forgiven, as cleansed, as righteous. Start seeing yourself as healed and whole and well. Start seeing yourself the way God's word sees you and all that belongs to you will come to you. Your inheritance will come to you. Opportunities will come to you. It will stop passing you by. It will come to you because your voice is your address in the spiritual realm. The more you say it, the more it's coming towards you in the spiritual realm. So I'm saying to you today, let's stop blaming. Let's stop accusing. Let's stop worrying about stuff. You have a heavenly father who cares for you. You're no longer a desperate person now that you are a child of God. You belong. You have an inheritance. Amen. Amen. Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Say absolutely not. Absolutely. I am debt free. Amen. Numbers eleven twenty three. And the Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's arm been shortened? Now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. Say this after me. God, God. your arm is not shortened. Your word concerning my debt freedom will come to pass. Amen. Psalm 78, 41. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. You can limit God. People can limit God. People get mad and say, you can't limit God. No, we know we God's limitless. But you can limit Him in your life and what you believe. That's how He can be limited. Because He will never force Himself we must open ourselves up to him. So say this after me. God, God I'm, not I'm not turning back. I'm not tempting you. I am not limiting you. Amen. Amen. No more limits. Say no more limits. No more limits. Hallelujah. God has unusual ways. God has unlimited avenues of providing for us that extend beyond our natural limitations. Amen. Faith will bring it into your hands. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So with men it's impossible. In the natural people would say, No man, that's impossible. Yeah, with you men it's impossible, but with my God all things are possible. Amen. Say that through God, through God it, is it is possible to live dead free. Love Hallelujah. Amen. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Say, I believe I am debt free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We go by faith, not by what we walk by faith, not by what by sight, by what we see. Amen. Amen. Luke 18, 27. But he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Say it is possible for me to love debt free. Romans 4 21 and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Say, I'm fully persuaded. That I'm debt free. Amen. I'm fully persuaded. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.20. 
Now to him who by consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. God is able. Say that. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think. Amen. 1 John 5, 4, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So death is, say death is of the world system. I overcome the power of death with my faith. Amen. Praise God. So it's time to stretch your vision for death freedom. This was a word from the Lord that passed, God gave past to George. Listen to this. God said to him, I am demanding you, listen to this, pay attention. This is what I made a confession even of this afterwards for us and for future. I'm going to declare it every day. I am demanding you to break out of the religious, restricted, poverty, inferior, mediocre, below standard, cut back, barely getting by, small-minded, cheapskate mentality, limited box you have been in concerning what I want to do in you, for you, and through you. God's commanding you today to break out of that religious box, that limited box that you've been in. He's commanding you to come out of that. You have been restrained by three things. Number one, your lack of trust in my word. People get restrained because they don't trust God's word. If you can trust the, the word of your pharmacist and he says, have put this cream, this ointment on your foot here, it will help you and you run home and you do it. Surely you can trust the word of the Lord. Surely you can trust God. If he says, if you bring all your ties, I'll open the window. You can trust him. You have to trust him. You can trust him. So many people are restrained by their lack of trust in his word. Number two, you have been restrained by negative events that have piled up over the past years designed by Satan to erode away at your hope and zeal and cause you to give up. So Satan has a design and he brings negative events that starts piling up over the years of a lot of things that happen where he just starts to, you know, eat at your, your hope and your zeal. You were so excited for your dream. You were so excited for what God can do. And now you feel like giving up and you feel hopeless. You started out, you, uh, even I was reading this morning, Galatians 5, where Paul said, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? You were running so well. How many people, so who hindered you? Not what, who? Somebody's talking to you. The devil or other people are lying to you saying, your God is not, your God is wisest. And look at, you have to be careful. Don't let the devil eat away at your hope. Negative events that have piled up. I'm telling you, you have to watch it and you have to get back into the word and really let that mental limits fall away. I mean, I remember when we had our electricity off 10 months, eventually six months into it, it was so much on me. And now I'm starting to see how I can get a bigger lamp in my home with gas. And I'm thinking, yo, I'm planning to buy more other things for the paraffin and instead of getting out and believing God for the money to pay the electricity. But that's how a situation starts getting at your hope. Amen. Or oh, even the past two years, I mean, thank God he provided at the cinema. Every month he provided, but it was tough. We were living on the edge. It started eroding at my faith and my zeal. And it was starting to affect me. And I started being like, you know, just living on the edge. And it was, it was not good. And the past two, I be, and it's, thank God it has changed now. But, but I'm telling you, you see, that's why it's important for us to, to make sure that our faith breaks us out of that limited box into a different realm of blessing that God has for us. Amen. That's why it's good to hang around people that um, already been there before you. Or, or that you see somebody earn that salary, say, Lord, thank you, I'm next. Or you see somebody go on holiday and you learn, ask them, how did you do this? How did you get it? If Cain had asked Abel, how come God accepted your offering and not mine, you would have been okay. But instead of asking, why, what did I do wrong? Is there something I'm missing here? No, we rather went and got jealous and killed his, his brother Abel. If he had just taken the time. Amen. 
That's why when you see somebody, God's blessing somebody's business, go ask him, what are you doing? Or you see another church prospering and say, Pastor, what are you doing? You don't get jealous of others. We, 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 we find out. But I'm saying, make sure that we don't allow this to restrain us anymore. Negative events that have piled up over the years that Satan has designed and is using to try and eat away at your hope and your zeal. Stir up and break out of that mold today. Break out of that limited box and restriction, that cheapskate mentality. We have to break out of it. Amen. I'm telling you, something is not expensive if you got two million rand in your in your in your in account. That four hundred rand that looks so expensive for that item or for that, it's like ah, shin, why must I get this for you? It's so cheap. You know when you have it, but now if you only have five rand, it's like here, just four hundred looks like you <laughs> mountain. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It's just it said. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It never said the adversity is big. It said if you're fainting in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It never said the adversity was big. Amen? So people come and they say, oh, it's so bad, it's so tough. And God said to, to Keith Moore, he said, ask them, is it that the problem is so big or is it that your faith is so small? Because no matter how big the problem is, faith can tackle it. Faith can handle it. Faith can move that mountain out of your way. The third thing that uh, he was restrained by was fear of failure. Fear of not making it and fear of stepping out in faith. Don't let fear hold you back, cause you not to step out. S step out. Yeah, amen? Step out. Uh, um, a, step in f a step of faith, even if it's in the wrong direction, God can correct the step of faith, even if it's in the wrong direction. But at least step out. But sitting and waiting in fear in the boat is out of God's hands. You must step out. Then God will speak. Then God will show. But don't allow fear to hold you back. Step out. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, step out. Amen. Step out. Amen. You, some of you remember step out. Amen. Amen. So listen, he said, it is a new day, a new time, a new hour. I am now commanding you to reach out further with your faith more than you ever have before. Stretch, stretch, stretch forth and see it with your faith. That is the key, the ability to see. Only through the eye of faith will you be able to see the exceeding superabundant above all you could ask or think. That's why we must get in the word so that we can see it's possible. We can have it. We must see it with the eye of faith. Call for it. Call for what you see with the eye of faith. Exceeding provision beyond comprehension awaits my body. But you must come up over your limitations into a realm yet untapped. Aim your faith higher, call for the harvest, raise the standard, set a new mark, lift up your eyes and look. Amen. Amen. After Lot had moved away from Abraham, he got away from that strife, and then God said, okay, now look left, right, north, south, east, west, whatever you say, Abraham, with your eyes, it's yours, have it. We must see with the eye of faith. See yourself finishing this year strong. Amen. See yourself finishing. Don't see yourself struggling again for Christmas. See yourself having a prosperous dinner and a prosperous Christmas and a, and a prosperous... Believe God for that holiday. Believe God for a prosperous January. Nips cut of his in January 2020, 25. Believe God to have more than enough where you can even bless others. Amen? Amen. With a roast leg where you have a few in your deep freezer. I'm just saying, stretch your faith. No, don't limit God. Stop limiting. Let's use our faith to get it. Amen. Faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. God is able. Say, God is able. God is able. So we must make a quality decision to live debt free. We must thoroughly resolve and settle the debt issue. We can no longer play with it. This takes a vigorous and aggressive faith assault. Living debt free will take a quality decision. We must make a quality decision. A quality decision settles the issue once and for all. A quality decision is a decision with which there is no retreat, no turning back, no return. A quality decision is a decision where argument and debate no longer exist. We don't talk about it. We don't debate it. We don't argue it. We settle. It's settled. This is what we agreed. It's settled. We don't discuss it. We don't pray about it. We settle it. Our children are not going to hell. We settle it. We will always love prosperous and love yield. Amen. We settle. You, still, you settle certain things. A quality decision becomes a memorial to look back at 
When you are challenged to compromise, you stand. A quality decision opens the door to the reality of what you are desiring and believing for. You are only one decision away from debt freedom. The moment you make the quality decision to live debt free, God sees you debt free. That decision will activate your faith and will lead you out of debt. A firm quality decision will stand the test of time. All of heaven backs your decision. God upholds or backs all things your quality decision to live debt free by the power of his word. Because you have aligned yourself to his word, all of heaven's reserves are at your disposal. Now, as you set your face like a flint, according to Isaiah 57 to 9, the Lord will help you get out of debt. So make a quality decision today. It's time to decide, Lord, I'm making a quality decision. We're going to live debt free. And start where you're at. Start with what you have. Amen. But make that decision. Amen. So what I've done is on a practical side, when you leave today, and it's also available online, just WhatsApp, we'll send the forms to you that way digitally if you want it. But there's copies there on the info desk. It's called a prayer of agreement for debt freedom. Amen. So the first page is you list all the, the debts. So you must, you must be diligent to know the state of your flocks. You must know what you owe. Don't be scared of him. Say, because bang for nuts. Huh? So go check your report, go check the ITC, go see what's going on and go make a list of what you owe and how much you owe and write it down so that you know where you're going. You're aiming your faith at something. Amen? So there you make a list like we've done. We've got a list here. It was a long list, but check how the, the lines have been scratched. Gone. 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 God is good. And when did we pray this? 21st of September 2023 at 25 past 7 in the evening. We signed dated it and I'm telling you this one is already I can already see you where I thought I'm going to pay God's already moved on that situation amen so look at there so I'm saying you write it down so be diligent to know the state of your flocks amen don't be scared find out what's going on don't be don't run away from them phone them and say listen I need to know how much do I owe you I need to pay Please, I'm making, I, I want to just know so that I can make a plan to sort these things out. And you make a list and you write it down. I'll stand on God's word. Then you write out all the scriptures that you believe in God for. Here's some scriptures I gave you today that you can stand on. But write it out and write out your scriptures. And then you, you, you stand on these scriptures and you, when you pray the prayer. So the whole, this thing is the whole prayer and you can go, you'll see it. And then the third part is, our spiritual authority, Satan, we bind you and render you helpless from interfering with our debt freedom in the name of Jesus. We lose the ministering spirits and the power of God to successfully complete this agreement. We release our faith, believing for our total debt freedom now. We speak to the mountain of debt and command it to be removed. We call those things which be not as though they were. What things soever we desire, we believe that we receive them and we believe we have them now. Jesus, the high priest of our confession, will bring it to pass. We will praise and thank God until we see. Further, we praise and thank you for our debt freedom. We honor you and glorify your name for the fulfillment of our prosperity. We have it now in Jesus' name. So I have this on my, 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 my wardrobe. Open it and I see it every time and I just lay hands on it and say, Thank you, Lord, on that day, 23rd of 21st of September 2023, we agreed and we received our debt freedom from all this on that day. Thank you. I have it now. Amen. And you have a, uh, your, your point of faith. So you, you, you apply that. And then you sign. You and your wife, whoever you agree with, sign it. And uh, you date it and you put the time. So that's next month is a year. All that is almost gone. One, more, one year. Amen. Oh, no man, anything except to love them. Hallelujah. And faith. Yes. And then we received income as well this year. And God gave us favor for debt release. Uh, and, and some, we just, the first thing we do, we, we pay our debt and then we live on the rest. So now we don't say, oh, here's another 10K. Let's go buy us another TV. No, we don't do that. We go pay the debt first and then you live on the rest. Because now you're not paying the interest on that. Amen. Those of you who are out of debt who operate like us, especially older generation, I can see you shaking. Yeah, yeah. Tell them, pastor. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let them first go sort out their things. Then they go buy them that McDonald's. But God will give you both. He'll give you the money for your McDonald's and to pay the debt. Amen. Amen. But let's just do that. Be obedient. Go pay the debt. Then live on the rest. 
Amen. And then God gave us favors. I mean, one person, they said, no, thank you for coming to bed. No, we released you of think 3,000 rand and we didn't have to pay and we had to just pay the balance. So you get favor for debt release. So, but what happens is now you're free. You, there's a joy that hits your spirit like nothing else does when you know that debt is gone, that burden is gone, that weight is gone. So there's the available there. It will also be available digitally. Amen. So you're ready to declare and uh, speak faith. Amen. And uh, make your quality decision today. Amen. I'm telling you, it, it, it seemed like, oh, last year, this time, it's like, oh, Jesus. I remember even having to throw 100 and petrol in at the garage after one counseling session. And it's like, oh, Lord, shoo, just try to make it back home. But I had to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Electricity. Oh, just waiting for 100 rand to throw in. Those days are over. That is not God's will, that. Amen. God brought the people out of Egypt through the desert into the promised land. They weren't supposed to stay in the desert. Desert is just enough, not enough in the desert. Promised land is more than enough, overflow. And then Josh came one day uh, last year and he was sitting there and he said, you know what the answer here is that? No matter how much we try and save or whatever, the answer is we need to live in the overflow. We need overflow. I said, amen. I printed my overflow confession, released my faith, and I said, we're living in the overflow. Amen. Amen. How many of you are ready to live in the overflow? Overflow. Amen. So let's, let's declare this this morning. I'm not going to ask you to stand because it's quite a bit, and then I'll, we'll stand and worship. Say this after me. By faith in Jesus' name, we make the quality decision. Amen. To live debt free. We are getting out of debt. Staying out of debt. And we're living God's abundant overflow. As of today. The 25th of August. At 10.29 a.m. We declare that we are debt free. I am debt free now. In Jesus' name. My days of death are over forever. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So let's declare this after me. I want you to stretch your faith and your vision. Say this after me. I have broken out of the religious, restricted, poverty, inferior, mediocre, below standard, Cut back, cut back, barely getting by, barely getting by small minded, minded cheapskate mentality, cheapskate. limited box limited that I've been in. I am no longer restrained by a lack of trust in God's word. I am no longer restrained by negative events that have piled up over the past years. Designed by Satan to erode away at my hope and zeal and cause me to give up. I am no longer restrained by the fear of failure, fear of not making it, and fear of stepping out in faith. It is a new day, a new time, a new hour. I am now commanded to reach out further with my faith more than I ever have before. I am stretching, stretching, stretching forth and seeing it with my faith. Through the eye of faith, I am, see, I am seeing the exceeding superabundance above all I could ask or think. I am calling for it. I am calling for what I see with the eye of faith. Exceeding provision beyond comprehension awaits me. I am coming up over my limitations into a realm yet untapped. I am aiming my faith higher 
I am calling for my harvest. I am raising the standard. I have set a new mark. I have lifted my eyes. My God is limitless. Therefore, I refuse to restrict my faith. Instead, I choose to fill myself with the word. The wings of my faith are stretched out as the eagles. Every mental limit is falling away as the word renews my mind. I'm pushing the envelope and going out deeper, out where the joys of living really are. My faith knows no limits. Let it blow. Hallelujah.